Hey guys, what if you asked me to go to the store? And while I was there, uh, you gave me a list of things that you wanted me to get. And you said, hey, all I need are white cotton balls. And I said, okay, I got your white cotton balls, but also for myself, I wanted to get some purple ones and some green and orange ones and some other stuff for me because that's what I like. You wouldn't be too happy, would you? Because I got a lot more than what you asked for for yourself. You All you needed was the white cotton balls, but I got lots more than that. You see, God tells us exactly how he wants us to worship him. It's his worship. We're just doing it. And he establishes, tells us everything we need to know about worship in Scripture. And so Jesus instituted and told his apostles, showed his followers how to worship him or worship God. And they, in turn, turned around and wrote it down and, and did it. And other people saw it and they wrote it down. And so there's a lot that goes in to worship. And I'm here in our auditorium because this is where we, uh, for the most part, know worship and we worship God. But you can worship God anywhere because worship comes in uh, a few forms. And we'll see that right now of the different elements that we see in worship. First of all, we worship God whenever we are singing to him. Whenever we get up here and uh, we lead a song and, and we're singing praises to God out of our hymnals or out of memory, when we sing to God, that's worship. And he asks us to sing from our hearts. And we have record of people writing down that the apostles and the early Christians, whenever the church first started, that they got together and they sang together. But also, they did a lot more than that. Whenever they got together, they also prayed together. That's another way that we worship is we sit and we come together and we talk to God. And we pray to Him and we thank Him for everything that He's done for us. We uh, praise Him for all the things that He's done for us and all the blessings He's given us. We ask Him to heal people, ask Him to help us, and we uh, pray to God in our worship. That's a part of our worship. We also spend time giving back to God because he has blessed us. The early church, they were a group that helped each other. And whenever somebody was sick, they would come together and put some money together and go and help that person pay for medications and Whenever this person was in trouble or they needed help, they would come together and get money together and go help this person or buy food for these people if they were in need. And so they gave because they were blessed. And that was how they worshipped. And we do the same thing. Whenever we pass around the, the collection plates or right now they're at the in the auditorium at random spots, we give because God blesses us so much. He has blessed us. When he woke us up this morning and with a great life and a great family and we have food on the table and we're able to ride around in a car and go to school and come to church and we're so blessed and so we give back to God. We give uh, to the collection where that can go out and help the church and help those who are in need and help missionaries who want to go and spread the gospel. And so that's one another way that we worship is we give back to God. Another way is we listen. We listen to a sermon or we're uh, studying and reading scripture, um, listening to the sermon and us giving a sermon and, and sharing the word of God is a way of worship. And so we grow uh, through our knowledge of scripture and our appreciation of God and what we hear and we grow and become stronger Christians because we study the word of God and because we listen uh, to the application that, that we try to give and we try to seek to understand more. And so uh, a very strong form uh, or strong characteristic of our worship is listening to a sermon. We know that Paul was really good at teaching other people what they should do and how they should live. 
And so we do the same thing now uh, that we read in Scripture of. Uh, we have somebody here um, in the pulpit, whether that's giving a sermon or something, um, and teaching Scripture, teaching the gospel, teaching the Bible, and we grow from that. That's another way that we worship. And lastly, Christ calls us to remember him and what he did for us and how he went to the cross and died for us. And whenever he had the Last Supper with his closest disciples, his apostles, he instituted the Lord's Supper, meaning that he began it. He established this time that he wanted his followers once a week to come together and to um, eat bread together and to drink of the fruit of the vine, what we have as grape juice and, and of a small little cracker, uh, to remember the, the, the body that he, Christ sacrificed for us and the blood that he shed for us. And he calls us to worship God in the way that we remember him. And we sit in this time focused on Jesus and the appreciation we have and the thankfulness we have of what he did for us. So that's five characteristics, five elements of our worship that we see here. And like I said, you can go out and do these yourself, no matter where you are. If you're traveling, you have a sports game somewhere else, or you're on vacation, you can worship God no matter where you are. You can sing praises to God. You can pray to God whenever you want to. You can study your Bible. You can uh, give to those who are in need. You can sit down and think about uh, what Christ did for you. And that is... Uh, all the forms that we show here uh, every Sunday morning, just like we're called to, uh, of worshiping God. Because he has asked us to, through scripture to do this. And so we do exactly what he asks. That's how we worship. And that's today's letter of today is W for worship. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.